Hi guys, welcome back to the Artificer channel and today we have another new release from Ravel for 2021. This is the PT76B and I'm really excited to show you this one. It's a brand new kit, it came out as of this year and I'm excited to see Ravel pick up the baton when it comes to this type of unusual amphibious tank. Now as always with Ravel, they have done a nice job with their new boxes and you can see what the vehicle will look like on the back. Really nice box art on the front. Now in this kit there isn't a lot of pieces. I'm kidding, there are loads of pieces for this type of vehicle. Let's have a look at the instructions. So this is a level 4. And you think to yourself, well, you know, this is a PT-76, look how simple it looks on the front. Why would it be a level 4, you say? Well, look at the first page. You can see a lot of parts, and some PE parts included. Yep, photo etch. So, when we look at the first page, straight away you can see tiny, tiny detail inside the turret. This is definitely a level 4, so you're going to have to take a lot of time with this one, but I think it will be a very fun build indeed. The level of detail with Ravel kits has really increased I find, and there's a lot of variations as you can see there, you've got the choice of a snorkel or just the back hatch, and again you've got different versions of the turret that you can try out. And I like how expansive and explanatory they have these instructions nowadays. But what I find so fascinating about this kit are those vents at the bottom. Those vents we'll come on to later. And what I find interesting is this has a full-on track. There's no individual linkage. I think that's unusual, but I think I'm not too fussed by that. I'm quite looking forward to just dealing with four tracks instead of individual links. So at stage number 20, what are these peculiar looking objects you may ask? Well, these are in fact hydrojets, and this is what powered the PT-76 in the water. And what I like about Ravel is they've included the vents underneath which are hollow. So that's quite a nice little addition. There's a lot of detail in this kit. It's all those little parts that make a big difference. Including some really nicely cast lights as well as a front bow plate for the tank which allows it to stabilize in the water. And here we've got the PE parts or the photo etch grates which really make all the difference when you add them in. As well as handles and also the nozzle covers which you can also, like I said, adjust. Now the interesting thing is they've given you some PE parts here for the light protectors and I think that's going to be quite challenging. Now, what I was a little disappointed about with Ravel were the variety of decals available for this kit. I would have thought being a vehicle used by the North Vietnamese extensively in the Vietnam War, they would have at least maybe added in some North Vietnamese markings. But I guess they had more of a Cold War feel to this one and they wanted to kind of push it in a different direction. One thing I will say, the addition of having North Vietnamese markings would have made this all the more interesting, especially when it comes to this tank's big involvement in the Battle of Lang Vey against the US Special Forces. But that's another story. Moving on to the sprues themselves, there are a lot of sprues. You've got pretty much one, two, three, four, five sprues, six in fact if you count the hole right there, and they are quite jam-packed. Now, classic Ravel, you've got the tracks and the wheels, 
and the other repeated parts, the times two parts, which are on one sprue, and they're going to be exactly the same on the other one as you'll see later on. The detail looks good, the wheels look very interesting, the tracks have a really nice amount of detail as well. It's nice to see teeth inside a vehicle's tracks, because it just means that they'll grip the wheels a lot better. As I said, here is the second sprue, completely identical. No flash, no issues, nicely done. Now onto the next sprue, it's slightly smaller than all the rest, but this one has a lot of detail, a lot of small parts in it, including the hatches for the top of the turret, parts of the gun construction, and also the back of the tank where the nozzle covers would go. A couple of hatches there, and the actual gun casement. If you look closely, you can even see that the gun itself has a hole which has been hollowed out, which means that you don't have to spend ages trying to drill in or try and find the correct hole for the gun. Now onto the next sprue, we just have the bottom running gear there, which has some nice detail where the sprocket will go and all of the wheels. Then you've also got the bow plane there, which has some really nice detail, which is a lot better than I expected. I thought we'd at least see a couple of injection molding blips. Overall though, you've got some good detail there. The hydro jets look good as well, and I think they will fit nicely together. Second to last sprue we have the sides of the tank and also the turret and it looks like a standing platform. What's nice is the fact you can see some vents there which give you some added detail. They haven't just simply pasted on something that looks like it's uh, 2D. And even if you look closely you can see there that the hatch at the front where the driver sits there are some holes so you can add some more detail to that if you wanted. The turret is nice and smooth, and there's a lot of detail added onto the side of it also. Very nice. Now the last sprue is the bit that I was really interested in showing you. Can you see there? It's uh, been hollowed out. You can see straight through, and that's where the nozzle sucks the water in and pushes it out the back of the tank. That's where the hydro jets will go. So something to think about in future maybe, if you wanted to turn this into an RC unit, which would be quite ambitious, or if you wanted to put it in a diorama. And lastly, we have some photo etch parts. The only issue I have is the challenge that it's going to be to build the light covers, which you can see there. Obviously, if you follow the instructions carefully and don't be too heavy handed, you should be able to fit it into the right position. And lastly, but not least, we have the decals. As I mentioned before, a little bit disappointed that we've only got just Cold War Soviet style or GDR decals. I would have liked to have seen the North Vietnamese version. You know, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the kit. I'm glad that Ravel has come out with something like this, because I wasn't too impressed with some other kits that I have been building. But then again, I haven't built this kit yet, so I guess time will tell. This is definitely one to get hold of if you like your Cold War tanks. It's a very unusual amphibious light reconnaissance tank, so I do recommend it. It's brand new from Ravel. It's here, and I think it's about time that you got one of these. Well, thanks for watching, guys, as always, and until the next time, stay safe, and I will see you soon.